Hey, thanks for tuning in. So in this video, I want to give you an introduction on how to get started with stop motion animation. There's going to be a few videos in this series, so please subscribe so you can catch them as they come out. Uh, here I'm just showing you how to get started, setting up a stage. I'm, I got some green board at a department store and I'm setting it up with some LED lights that I also found, I think at a Walmart. Uh, those light wands are like nine dollars each and I'm also using a mounted LED flashlight. Now using battery powered lighting has its advantages in that you can just kind of move things around and not have cables but uh, batteries do wear out and so if your lighting fades over the course of doing your animation that's something to keep in mind so um, if you're using battery powered lighting make sure that the shots that you're creating are, are brief and uh, not long-winded. The figure and stand that I'm going to be using is called Armature 9. It's a fantastic doll for art reference, for painting, drawing, but also, as you can see, for animation because it's so stable and strong and it can achieve every pose humanly possible. And it's great for stop motion animation, as you're about to see. So, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm punching a hole through my backdrop and uh, this is simply so that I can plug the articulated crane through the hole and cover up the, the platform itself. That way I'm going to have less cleanup to do later on, such as a frame by frame removal of the articulated uh, neck. Once you've got all that set up, you've got your camera, you've got your stage, you've got your lighting, um, it's a matter of setting up a camera posing the character and taking pictures. The beauty of stop motion animation, and, and I know this from, because my background is in 2D animation and 3D animation, is that uh, there's no rendering necessary. You don't have to draw every frame. You don't have to wait for the computer to render out every frame. Uh, you just take a picture, which that's, I think is fabulous. Now, I should mention that this crane is extendable. You can buy additional extensions for $9. And as you can see, that essentially doubles the length of the, of the crane, giving you a lot more flexibility in terms of how you stage the armature. For example, I could this way I could move the stand all the way off to the side and, and place the armature in view coming in from the side. But I'm going to stick with my original plan, which was to have it come in through the bottom. And as you can see, what I'm doing here is covering up the arm with a green foam it's like a two dollar piece of foam I found at a craft store and then I'm securing it with safety pins and that way I can sort of spin it around and make sure that the green side is always facing the camera. Uh, this way I can do the keying, uh, the removal of the green automatically through software rather than having to go in and frame by frame and erase stuff in, in Photoshop and I'll have a video specifically devoted to that later on. One of the hardest things to deal with when you're setting up the lighting is to try to avoid casting shadows, especially with that arm sticking up from the middle. And so one of the best ways that you can um, avoid the shadows is to have a much a larger stage where the character is further away from the back of the cyclorama. Uh, that way the, the shadows are less likely to hit the background and you can have more separation between your lighting setup that affects the green and the lighting setup that affects the character. The stage I've set up here is a very small, uh, quick and dirty uh, setup. So if you really want to go professional, you'll want to set up something that's uh, considerably larger than this. So you have more of a throw distance between the camera and the character and the character and the backdrop. But as you can see, I got it set up fairly nicely and usable. Um, it's washing out in places, but that's because I'm recording this. I'm not taking photographs with proper exposure. And, uh, but once I do, I'll be able to get a nice a flatter green color that will be easier to remove through software later on. Here you can see the same setup, but just in a different room. I've got my iPad set up with a stop motion uh, application that costs $5. And this is a really easy and inexpensive way to get up and running. I've got more distance between the stage and the camera and you can see that the shadows and there's not as many shadows in the background right behind the character. I've got only shadows on the floor which is good because I want to keep those shadows. I can they'll they'll composite nicely onto um, my matte painting or background art that I create later on. 
And so here you can see me going through and just moving the character and I'm walking away every time to take the snapshot and the picture that I need for that particular animation. Now in the process of doing all this, one of the challenges you're going to face is feet slipping around on you. The crane does a really good job of holding the character in place, but the feet are still going to have a tendency to slip. And so I found that using a sort of green clay uh, does the trick, especially if you're working in this kind of uh, green background, green ground plane setup. Um, the feet do have magnets underneath them, but that sort of restricts you to always having to work on a metallic surface. So working with the green clay I find is, a, is an excellent alternative. Now if you don't want to endorse the product by keeping the, the logo visible in the front of the character, if you have the wooden uh, armature, you could use some wood putty or some wood fill to just cover up uh, those gaps and then sand it down when it dries up and uh, you've got a nice smooth and logo-less uh, torso. Uh, that is totally optional. Um, I'm totally happy with you. Of course, you keeping the logo there. It's great for us, but if you want to remove it, that's fine too. I'm going to have a whole bunch of videos that go over cool things that you can do with the wooden armature in terms of post-processing, like sanding, varnishing, engraving, carving, um, all sorts of cool hacks and modifications uh, you can make to the armature. So please subscribe and, and stay in touch. Um, in the next video, I'm going to go over the actual animation frames and how I go about compositing them, uh, adjusting the timing, and actually bringing the animation itself to life, uh, including the keying out the background, the green in the background, and creating a matte painting and all that stuff. So I'm going to take this all the way from the start, which you've seen here, to completion. And uh, if that interests you, please subscribe and stay in touch. And um, please leave your comments and uh, let me know if there's anything in particular you'd, you'd like to learn about or if you have any questions. Thanks, guys. Bye.